Welcome everybody to another episode of Level Up Cleveland. And this week we have a special episode for you as we are sitting here with Mr. Greg Johnson. He is a local artist. He is also the father of Matt Johnson, the drummer of Tricky Dick and the Cover Ups. And if you remember, Tricky Dick was on our show um, last season. I believe it was season two. And, um, but we're here in his studio and uh, I just want to say thanks for having us come right. down here, man. This is really an impressive setup you got I, here. I appreciate you guys, appreciate you guys doing that. Yeah, really, yeah, really yeah. Nice to come down. Heck yeah. We've been talking to Greg about, you know, the, the, what he's got done doing here. And I think it's quite fascinating. I think you'll all be quite fascinated by everything that's going on here. And he also has a gallery coming up where you're going to be showing your, your, your paintings and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I'm going to have a solo exhibition at... Uh, Stella's Art Gallery in Willoughby. Uh, it's going to be. It's going to run from February 1st through February 28th. Uh, the artist reception is going to be February 10th from 7 to 9. And I want to just pack the joint because uh, I want as many eyes on my work as possible. Since this is my new vocation, and uh, I'm really excited about it. So, not doing anything on a Friday night. You want to warm up? Come on out to the show. Excellent. So you're retired. I am. And, and recently, fairly recently yeah, retired? Yeah, just over a year. And and you've always done this, but because now retirement is here, you can do it a lot more, yeah. obviously. And it seems like you do a lot of stuff. And um, another thing we've noticed is that you don't just have one medium of art as far as the drawings. and the you, you, There's paint, there's markers, there's pencils, there's... I don't know how many different things are, are down here, but you seem to go... All kinds of different things. What, what, how, when do you, how does that determine in your mind what to use or when you're doing these things? Is that? I, all I know for sure is when it comes to my style and my technique is that if I get stuck in one technique or even one idea, uh, I get bored. Uh, it's, I might as well just crank them out on a machine. It does, they don't have any meaning for me. And uh, with each passing piece, uh, I discover some other kind of technique or some other kind of media that just happens to be laying around or I'll see it online. Oh, let me try that. And I just, I don't have any set ideas. I very rarely pre-sketch except for projects. Uh, and so they, they tend to come out the way that they come out. They come so you just inside. start at one point yeah. somewhere and then somehow subconsciously almost you're just this thing yes. kind of creates itself yeah it, it's exactly how it happens wow. it comes from somewhere deep inside and i don't know it's almost as if i've said this before it sounds a little fanciful but it sounds almost as if they want to be brought into the world they won't want to exist outside of the normal way the art is created i think that uh, that was what picasso was about uh, just to name one not that i want to compare myself to him <laughs> Right. But you know, that attitude of uh, art going beyond just a representation of life, but actually a representation of the inner life. It sounds a little deep, but you know. Well, you know. No, it's going to be deep. I, when you look at these paint, paintings, you're going you're gonna to know that the person that painted these thinks deep. I, I think so, at least. Um, when do you start doing art? When do, you, when, when, do you, when do you realize you can do it? When do you start taking it more seriously? You learn, obviously, I mean, did you have to learn some technique in yeah. order to get to this point? Yeah. Or, or, okay. So, like, when does that all happen? I, I, I always had a, a talent for art. I get, uh, my Polish relatives did the mural in Terminal Tower, which I found out uh, when I was a kid. My dad always made it, always, he was a little artistic. He always made it possible for me to have stuff. He would bring these forms back from work, and I'd draw on the back and all that kind of thing. He, he just made it possible. And I began to realize as I would take art in school, that I was the best artist around. I was better than anybody. They, oh, wow, you can really draw. Oh, and I was. I was really good, just naturally. So uh, it finally led to the idea that maybe I should go to art school when I retired, which I retired, when I graduated from high school. And uh, they had no money. So I got a job at a gas station, scraped together some money, and submitted to uh, Cooper School of Art, which used to be, it's now defunct. It was downtown uh, on Carnegie, around 22nd and Carnegie, in this six-floor building. That they occupied the top two floors. And um, I went there in 74 and lasted about a year and a half. And I, 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 I learned enough skills so that I could do, that I could draw, that I could, 
I've learned basic, really important things when it comes to art, but I, I was losing my mind. I had to get, I had to leave. It was just too, too, like being stuck inside a box somewhat, a lot of judgmentalism. It's natural for, uh, for art, art school to be that way. They're going to judge what you do. I took illustration, which is a mistake. I should probably should have uh, majored in fine art because that's the direction I ended up going. So, But, uh, I, yes, I did. I, I got the basics down and was able to go from there. When you say, like, the basics and stuff, one thing that I've always um, thought about when I look at art, and in general, you know, just because some of the most impressive thing to me is the shadings and how, how people actually create a depth in 3D within a 2D uh, picture with shadings and stuff like that. And it's not, it's not so much that it, it, it can be done as much as how the brain sees the, the line separations right. and knows how to achieve that depth and do it consistently mm-hmm. and, and sometimes so realistic, like it's, you almost have to look at it twice to be like, wow, is that a, a you know? Photograph, yeah. How, how like, that, that's the gift part here, isn't it? Like, that's the part that you're either you have or you don't have. Yeah, I, I went in just a raw talent, like most of the, the kids that went in at the time, just raw. Uh, and you, you, the, one of the first things you're taught is composition. As a matter of fact, I think it was my first class was composition. Uh, and so it, what it basically says is that it's, if you're going, it shouldn't really be down the middle because it'll be boring, it'll be static. And if it is down the middle, it better be interesting, that kind of thing. And your eyes should move. It shouldn't be stuck in one area. So this, so this sort of demands your attention, but then it, it sort of takes you around. It makes your eye move. I learned that. That was probably the most important thing I learned was, was that composition. And anatomy was a big deal. That was a really, you, you have to learn all the muscle groups. Light and dark, like you talked about, shades, colors, all those kind of things that you need. So I could have gotten my degree if I wasn't so lazy and wasn't so, uh, let's see, um, Potheaded, because <laughs> I discovered I discovered marijuana, and I probably wanted, to, but uh, it required a discipline and maturity I didn't have at the time anyway. But I'm kind of glad I did, because I, I I think that the staid outlook, the plaid feel, even when they think they're being creative, uh, would have held me back when it held back my that inner drive that we talked about before. So yeah. So but you but throughout so. After that time where you went to school, you quit school, you're like, uh, did you, at that point, from that point on, were you always kind of engaging in, in the art, or was there ever a point where you just kind of like abandoned it and, not, and then came back to it, or were you always doing this? Pretty much always. Uh, I got in my head that I could be a cartoonist, oh. so I, I tried that for a while. It's a wildly competitive field. Is it tough? Is that it's tough, incredibly tough. I mean, is it hard? The, the work part of it is that a hard? Is that the a, work part was easy? That was a blast. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, had, I had a lot of fun with that. But uh, cracking the the business itself is very very difficult. And again, it was a matter of discipline. If you wanted to be syndicated at the time, things are all different now. But back then, it was it was uh, analog. <clears throat> now everything's online now. <clears throat> um, so, feet. Uh, Syndicates, even even if my stuff was good, would just routinely reject because they, in order for them to buy a cartoon strip that they are convinced of, they then they have to sell it to a newspaper, and the newspaper has to usually because they only have a limited amount of s- space for the cartoons have to knock one off, and that gets bad press. That gets people start to complain. Uh, oh, why'd you get rid of Mary Worth? Oh, you know I that see. kind of thing, yeah, and they, they get they all can't these just letters. Keep adding pages. Yeah. Yeah. So, but you know, if I my art teacher in school said it's a way to go if you can do it because, yeah, they take fifty percent. So, and they used to charge I think two dollars a strip, uh, four dollars, two dollars a strip, and maybe six dollars for Sunday. You get half of that. You get a dollar. But <laughs> like somebody, that's that's if you sell to two hundred p- uh, different newspapers, that's one thing. Then then if you're like. Uh, I don't know, a funky winker bean. You're yeah, selling right. four thousand, and you're selling books, and you're being translated all over the world. You can they make you become money. a millionaire. Yeah, right. Doing what you freaking love. You yeah, know? right, right, right. So. Now, when you were doing these, were you doing like the the dialogue and everything for yeah. these things yeah. and everything? So that's that's all kind of an art in itself, right? Oh I yeah, mean, like that's yeah. not that really is completely yeah. separate from this. You yeah. were good at that too. You found like, is that would that be fair to say too? Absolutely. I mean, composition is a. a as much part of cartooning is it, it's an art, even though sometimes it doesn't seem like it. You'll notice that if you see panels, 
you'll notice that mostly, usually the heads are all the same, at the same height. Yeah. And the gag is, is usually a different one, if it fits. It's all about composition at that level, too. And you've got to make it funny. You've got to make it consistently funny. You have to produce one per day, 365 days a year. Otherwise, your editors, you know, it's, it's a very, very difficult. Grinding, yeah. It's yeah, a grind. it's a grind. Yeah, it really is. Uh, but it's one of those things that if you make it, if you're Charles Schultz, you know, you can buy Manhattan. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. Well, you know what? I think let's, let's, let's go, go around take a yeah. look at some of these. You okay. can tell us about what you got here. Sure. We won't look at every single one of them because we got to get out of here before midnight, right? I mean, there's like enough things <laughs> there for hours you could do this. But there's a couple of them that, you know, we'll go around, we'll look at it, and uh, let's do that. Sounds All good. Right. All right. All right, Greg. So what do we have here? This is This is called In Charge. It was actually uh, inspired by Putin <laughs> when he invaded Ukraine. Oh, so this uh, is recent. This is pretty recent. Yeah, this is a fairly recent one. Uh, this is one where I just, uh, it was another where I it started as an abstract. Most of my stuff starts as abstracts, and then something just so we talked about before it comes out. And this is, uh, I said, oh, I'm going to just go crazy with color. I'm going to have some fun and uh, and see what happens. That When you do these kind of things, any artist will tell you this. Uh, you don't want to take it too far, or you ruin it. Oh, God, I hate that. It drives, oh, shit. Yeah, well, you know? I, I mean, how much more can you add to that, though? I yeah, mean, that's, I mean, I, I could probably fill in all the white, but yeah. I, I love white. I think it's really, it's a big thing. That's so. really cool. I can see Putin. Yeah, there, there yeah, is. Yeah, like, yeah. like, as soon as you said it, I'm like, oh, of course that's who it is. That's, that's a, the portrait of a psychotic right there. And is that what, is that, what that kind of all is? Is like, you're, you're, you're yeah. just saying, like, see, if you look, nothing's wired properly. Everything's yeah. a mess. But just, he's in charge. Yeah, I get it. I get it. And this one, uh, this has, uh, I don't know where the fuck this came from. I, I look at it and say, what was I think? But uh, this paint is called Musau Black Paint. It's the blackest paint in the world. It's the densest black. You can't get any blacker than that. I found it on the internet somewhere. So, well, I'm going to try that because there's a black and white show at Stella's. And I end up having two pieces in there. It's, it's actually there right now. But I mm -hmm. just, uh, I love it you know, for some reason. It has a really beautiful texture. Where this came from, what it means, I don't know. Um, I call it, it's called, you call that a soul. I did that last week. Oh. Uh, that just, that's a week old. Yeah, it's a week old, yeah. Oh, wow. And I had, it's just done on Mace Night. Uh, I, I've been framing these works, and just uh, some of these works are too thick to have the backing on the, you know, you get with, uh, with these frames. Yeah, right. And so I had this Masonite, so I decided to paint on the Masonite. Wow. It's a, it's a, it's a horizontal. That is cool. TGB plane. So, yeah, it's like, you said this was a, a soul? This yeah, is, you, you call that a soul. You the call that, yeah, that's deep, man. Yeah, it's yeah. something about uh, multiple personalities, I think. I don't know. <laughs> That's funny that you don't know. I think I gotta be honest with you. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's by, by the best part. Now, what about like this? Who's this guy right here? I, I, this is he. For some reason, he keeps looking at me. I'm like, yeah. man, this. This is uh, actually I, I I did a free piece of um, Peter Sellers' Doctor Strange Love. Oh my God! Dude. Uh, and and uh, it didn't quite. This one didn't come out right, quite right. But it reminded me of, and the, the same thing. Have you seen that guy on the wall over there? Yeah, 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 yeah. That was the same thing. But it reminded me, this reminded me of like an insurance salesman picture. This is how it came out. It was a failure. It didn't look like Peter Sells at all. But I decided to just go with it. And it said, that moves out black again. And it's called Bill Schofield, Champaign, Illinois. <laughs> no reason? You just named him that? Yeah, he's, he looked like an insurance salesman, Bill Schofield. <laughs> Bill Schofield, male prostitute. All right, what else we got over here? Look at that. You can, you really. You can't really go far without five more popping up. Yeah, I've got them all over the place. Yeah, uh, this is uh, Leonard Cohen. I don't uh, know if you're a Leonard Cohen fan. Got that? Oh, yeah, there it is. And then, as another thing, it started out as a as, a, uh, as an abstract, and it became it, it went in that direction. Very cool. This Very guy cool. is one of my all time favorite drawings. It's basically my logo. I call him Ira, which is Latin for rage. Uh, this is this is about rage. I I first this is a copy one I did that was uh, eight and a half by eleven. I did it in nineteen eighty five. Oh, that's that old now. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. this is one of your this is one of the works that you did when you first started. Yeah. Kind of learning this whole yeah. doing this whole thing after right. you learned techniques and stuff. Oh, that's really good. I think uh, I think uh, some kind of drug was involved with that. <laughs> 
We won't say one <laughs> runs, but yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, it's either speed or downers, I think. I don't know. Uh, this is Joni Mitchell. And that's another one that came out just out, out of nowhere. Wow. Just sort of just showed up. So you're, you're, some of these are almost like a, so, uh, almost like a caricature of that version, but your mind kind of like thinks of them as almost instead yeah, of yeah. trying to duplicate exact. I started. So Joni Mitchell is one of my all-time favorite artists, and uh, she just. I said, "Oh, there she is." I That's saw. It. I saw it, and uh, you know, I, it had to be blue. That one right there is called. Uh, that was one of my first ones I did. Uh, that I entered in a show, and it was in 934 Galleries, except in down in Columbus. Uh, it's called Neand Neanderthal Night Sky. Uh, and it's, uh, what, the, what would a Neanderthal, you know, Neanderthal see when he looks up and sees the moon? And oh. see, what, what does all that mean? Can you imagine what Without a, any knowledge any of knowledge, any of the no stuff that we know, yeah. It, it must be scary as hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I can see what you're saying there, for sure. That's, that's very interesting. I've got a connection down uh, with 83 Gallery. It's the coolest thing. 83 Gallery in Columbus uh, partnered with a, uh, a bar called Brothers Drake Meadery, and they make they make their own mead. Oh. Okay. And they donated to 83 Gallery these group of guys three walls attached to their bar to to do monthly shows, and they just bring in all they bring in the craziest, most off the wall. You know, we're talking about non-traditional art some traditional a lot of it, but a lot of it just off the wall crazy my kind of stuff and they, they accept me every month so yeah that's, that's good well it is. i mean like the thing about this art is you can't really call it abstract because it's definitely has there's something there that's definite it's not something that oh, you yeah. have to really imagine but it, you can tell like you were saying like even this picture here where you know some of these you can tell they almost seem to start off as an abstract mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden an image seems to appear for you or something then you're like oh I see that now and then you just go ahead and yeah. kind of fill it all in yep you know and it's really neat as a matter of fact I call my art psychological abstract uh, it's, so it's comes from within and it and then comes it's from somewhere within that's all I know I meditate pretty much every day oh and so I. Do uh, ideas come to you at those moments sometimes where you feel like they, nothing comes to me at those Yeah, not times. an idea, but like the, yeah. I guess the, the, the motivation to get up and start doing that. The, the, I, I think the vessel gets empty a little bit oh. and it allows it to come in, I think. Wow. You know? Uh, you, you, don't, I, you don't sit, okay, I'm going to do something right now. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to do, I'm going to do this. I, I just can't do that. Yeah, right, right, right. Know? But then well, all of a sudden I'll get the, this itch. And you know, it will bug me, and it'll bug me, and it'll bug this, this idea. It has you know, to get suddenly, out. Yeah, and suddenly I find myself doing it. Now, this guy here. Oh, yeah, let's talk. Let's now, this is a project. This is one that, um, uh, one of 12, actually one of 16. And this was actually because I was talking about how I don't pre-draw or plan, but this, this one was planned. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard of Carl Jung's archetypes, 12 mm -hmm. archetypes. Basically, he came up with... 12 basic types of human personalities. Uh, there's, so I've got two or three of them here. Uh, this, is the, um, this is the creator. It's called the creator. All right, so this one here is? It's the lover. Uh, it was not meant to be sexy. I didn't want it to be sexy. Uh, the, the whole idea of the lover is not, uh, is not about sex. It's about a giver of love, more of a matronly, a, a sincere giver of love. So uh, I did it as a female because, generally speaking, females are more in touch with that aspect of ourselves. But at least I felt that way in this particular uh, piece. I made her a little uh, matronly, not too sexy looking, but I wanted her to be beautiful. And as we talked about, the blue kind of fits into the idea of love, which can be, love can be uh, not, love can be a sad thing. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of pain associated with love. Yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of sacrifice. And she does have a little sadness in her face when yeah, you're looking at yeah. her, like, like she's had a rough life. Yeah. That's what she kind of looks like, right? Yeah, and still, but she's protecting her love. She doesn't yeah. just give it to anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, and, and you know, that's funny, you can see that about your art, because some of your art is like this, where it's really dramatic almost. Yeah. It comes off as a real dramatic thing. But then you look over here, and you'll see some really silly yeah. stuff that you can tell. You know, like it's almost as if like you have a lot of different 
moods. And, uh, yeah, and, and, yeah. And, like, and you can, like, as you're painting, whatever you're feeling at that moment, mm -hmm. that's what's coming out because you can see how different all these really are. Yeah, this guy's this guy I call him Pink Man. Uh, he is a uh, he is a 21st century man who's just beginning to realize that his whole, the whole world is a white man, in uh, in America is falling all apart and he doesn't know what to do. He's hearing a lot of stuff and he's all confused and terrified, uh, and he just wasn't ready for any of this and it's kind of beating him down. Yeah, he's hearing a lot of stuff with them ears. Yeah, and the big blue eyes, you know, filled with filled with fear. Wow, that's pretty intense. Yeah, I try not to. I try not to make sound too intense because you call it goofy, and that's pretty what what I want. Well, it just that's yeah, what, it, well, that's you, what I wanted. There's a lot of exaggerated stuff in this. Yeah, thing. I want a goofy though. I want I want that. You know, we can't. I I sometimes worry that I take things t too seriously, and you gotta laugh too because we're all we're all pretty nuts sometimes. I just think it's kind of neat in this picture though that you were saying that he's hearing a lot of things right now. Yeah. So you made the ears large like that to like get that message across. That's yeah. kind of cool. I mean, I, I think that really is. That's neat. It's neat how art, you think to do those things while you do it. To me, that's just as neat as the picture itself. It sort of just comes out. Oh, yeah, these ideas come. It's such a, well, this is an old expression, but it's such a gas I bet. to, Whenever, to, to have these ideas go. And sometimes I like I, my chair is right here and my easel's right there. And I'll just sit and look at it. And I'll say, oh, you know, I got to get some plants. Yeah, like you have to, like, oh my god, like an epiphany. Yeah, like, yeah, ah. yeah, but yeah. can I do it? And that's where the fear is because they fuck it up and then, uh, God. Now, everybody, would, if they come down to see the show, would do, when you're doing this, they could, they, all these paintings will be there? Would they, would they uh, most, be? Of, most are. About 30, I've got about 33. I'm narrowing down to what I want to do. I got a lot of them uh, uh, framed. They're all going to be framed. Most, at least most of them are going to be framed. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to jam as many as I can into that space. But my goal is to uh, touch people. You know, I, or, uh, I'd like to get my name out, out there only that I can touch more people. And they're out there. I got one guy on Instagram. He's bought five of my pieces already. And he, he, oh, really? Yeah, he loves me. And uh, I don't know... Yeah, some I, of these... It's just not for everybody, you know? I just love being making that connection with people. Oh, yeah, this guy... Um, that was another one where I had the idea to begin with. Every now and then, I'll have, like, a dream or an idea, and it'll dog me and dog me and dog me. I'll have it in my head, and this, this was already there. So then it's not a matter of throwing things on the piece of paper and see what happens. This is a design, a specific design with a, with a specific message. So... Um, I was really, really proud of that. Yeah, it's really neat. It does have that cartoonish kind yeah, of feel right. to that's, it. Yeah, that's, that's Very the much idea. so. Yeah. So does this one. Like, these almost have that, all of them. They could all be in that kind of a Exactly. Thing. My cartooning comes through a lot. It's like, uh, this is another uh, archetype. This is the everyman. Oh. So uh, the everyman is, as you can expect, the ordinary guy, me and you, Go to work, do what we can, have a beer, that kind of thing. Just yeah. being, do, doing the best you Guys can. Guys, flannel shirt on, yeah. Being a being a guy. But you know, it's all like this house is very much like mine. I mean, I I, I could be the everyman. I, as a matter of fact, when I did all these twelve archetypes, I realized that even though I fit into one or they're all in everybody. Just one's more prominent right. You just than have another, different levels, you know? and that's what makes you you, right? And here's the magician, another archetype, and. Uh, I wanted the magician to be a scientist because that's our magic. Oh. Uh, so he's, it appears as if he's levitating a sphere, right? Oh. But, but there's, a, there's a little thing there holding it up. Yeah, you know, he's, he's not going <laughs> to, he knows better than trying to defy gravity. That's right? great. That's a great picture. And I love the angle that you chose to use where you're almost kind of looking down on him a little bit right there. Is that what that Yeah, that was the idea because yeah. I wanted him to be a little larger than life. Yeah, that's pretty. That's really neat. That's really, really neat. Hey, this is a. Uh, I really love this one. This is called. <laughs> it's an interesting story behind this one. It's called a thousand crescents. Um, wow. The other side, I I blew it. And it was nothing. Oh fuck! You know, gah! And I it was out of paper, and so I turned it over, and it's crescent uh, illustration board. And it says crescent, and it's got all these. Crescent moons on it. Oh, so if you look at it closely, you can see all, all these crescents. And I just drew over it, and that's another thing where I just went. I started going, 
It's like covering a tattoo fuck? almost. I, 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 yeah. And then once I once I got into it, once I saw the basic idea, then I just went in and added detail. Boy, was that fun! It took days and days, but you get kind of lost in it. In all these little things you're doing, you, these became crem- reminiscent of veins or trees. I didn't know what. So it has no real meaning, but it was a fucking riot to do. Like vessels, but it just looks like some type of vessels yeah. that are existing. Wow. But, but yeah, yeah, I'm one of my favorite drugs at one time. This may, uh, may reflect all that was acid in the 70s, especially. And that really reminds me of those days. Some of the trips that you might have had back in the color. days. Yeah. You have another one. Is that a sm- Is that the same? That's the same. Oh yeah, this is. Um, so just like, a, is that a print? This is a print. Oh, it's actually, okay. I'm going to give this to uh, uh, locally grown. So I'm oh, gonna, we're going to. They got the new studio coming. I saw that you guys interviewed them. Yeah. Uh, and I, I approached them to to in the same way I approached you guys because I, I saw that you interviewed them. They seem like really cool people, and they asked they if I would donate something in their new studio. I said, Oh yeah, sure. Give them a print. You know, so. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. And this guy here, that was another thing. It's just that this this guy just showed up again. And I, I he just did. I loved him. Uh, his name is uh, Hephaestus. Uh, it's called Hephaestus, who is the Greek god of uh, agony, I believe. So naturally smiling. Wow. Yeah. There's there's one here I really wanted to show you. I'm really proud of because I'm really bragging now. I'm in super super brag mode. <laughs> this, uh, do you recognize this guy by any chance? Probably not, right? You have to. Uh, I'm a poet as well. I and would say Bukowski. Bukowski, that's right. That's Bukowski, and that was my, one of my first attempts with that Musa black paint. And I'm, I really love it because it's it talks to me. It's that's who he is or who he was. He was a real gritty poet, uh, beat poet, I mean, really gritty. So you do poetry also? Yeah. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I've got a TikTok account, and I do my, uh, my paintings, and I pull out from them and do a, do a uh, poem related to the paintings, you know, just throw it on TikTok. Same thing for you, poetry, the way it comes to you? Is it, is it something that you kind of just get like a line of a poet maybe and then from there it just manifests itself into whatever? Pretty much. I'm pretty much pre-vert, or free verse, I should say. Uh, yeah, I just let it go. It depends upon your point of view of how you should approach poetry. Mine just, I put it out there. I understand some of the rules and regulations and, and then I go outside of those rules. I stay within free verse mostly. Yeah. You just have a good time with that. Yeah, yeah. So... Yeah. yeah, it took a couple more, but we'll take a couple more here. And... This one was uh, it featured Studio 18, the Ohio Art League Gallery uh, show for the uh, the fall show. Uh, uh, it's, it's called My Grandmother in the Sanatorium, circa 1930. It's a, it's a memory of my grandmother, a picture I saw of my grandmother when she was admitted to the sanatorium for... Um, uh, What's that lung disease that was so terrible? Polio? No, it was... Uh, tuberculosis. Tuberculosis. They didn't have any real uh, cure for it, so they send you out to this dry area and just rest and hope for the best. So I, the picture is always kind of stuck in my mind, so it got a good reception there, so I was proud of that. And this guy... There's another one. I don't know. I don't know. I have no just, idea. A, just a person? I, I that see, was just... And that's the muscle go? toning and stuff, the anatomy that you were yes, talking about. Yes, it is. You have and to learn and the that. composition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's called automaton cacophony. And he's, got, he's got a belly like mine. You, you know, why do Adonis all the time? <laughs> right? You don't, you don't, nobody's got to be you know, right, like yeah, a Greek right. god always, statue. Yeah, you know, most of us yeah. have our guts. Wow, you know, that's the most, way it is. Most of us right now looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> and with social media, there's so much shit going into our heads and ears. Yeah, everyone's supposed It'll to look a certain way. Well, uh, everyone's supposed to look a certain way, and everybody's body's yeah. perfect. And then you look around, and you're like, "That's not true." Yeah, no, that's that's what they look like. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and that was just one. That's that's what I'm having fun. I'm really, it's all fun. I this not, none of this. Is, the only time this is work is when I get some kind of commission and I have to work within somebody else's idea. Yeah. So over the years, I would freelance illustrate. Yeah. And, and want to shoot myself if it wasn't for the invoice, you know, so. Well, this is the problem with making money in art is that sometimes when you're making money in art, you're, you end up being in somebody else's 
yeah. you know, what they want from you because they're paying you or whatever. Yeah. And that becomes, kind of stifles the art part of it sometimes. It does. Sometimes you can take their ideas and run with it. I've been able to do that on occasion and had fun, but mostly it's like, God, I can't stand this. So, yeah, this is all fun. This is and it's so much fun that uh, I can't, I don't want to stop. I'm like addicted. <laughs> well, why would you stop? I mean, yeah, what's right, the, What's right. the point? It, 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 this is uh, this is called. <laughs> I really am proud of this. This is called. Trust me. <laughs> this is every insurance salesman and car salesman you've ever met, or politician. They seem nice. Or politician. <laughs> yeah. They seem nice enough, but I'm not sure there's any soul in there. No, are you? right. Those big black eyes. That's really cool. Yeah. The, the, the holes where the yeah, eyes holes. Are those are holes to, to a yeah. to a to a consciousless, soulless void. So excellent, man. So so what day? So when? Tell everybody again the, the, the times where they can come out and see all this stuff and the days and everything. What's the dates? Yeah, I'm gonna. It's at Stella's Art Gallery uh, in Willoughby. You can uh, Google that. Uh, I'm gonna be installing it uh, February 1st. It's in the atrium. They're also gonna have a, a show attached to that, so it brings in more people. And they uh, Stella's Art Gallery for anybody that lives in Lake County or, or wants to come out to Lake County. Come out to Stella's. They have like 50 artists that are in residence. All kinds of stuff. It runs the gamut from everything from traditional to a little out there. There's one guy that makes clocks out of vinyl albums. Oh. Yeah, and that's just to name one of the things. A lot of skilled artists there. It's a really cool place. And I just walked in there and, and, and liked it so much. I turns out they are renting that space, and I was looking for a wall. And uh, she... I said, well, look at my Instagram and see if what I have will fit in because that's what you want to do. You don't just want to approach a gallery. They have to, you have to fit in with the gallery. It's a yeah, business. Right, you right, know? Right, right. She was happy to do that, which I appreciate. And so that, I'm going to come in on the 1st, install it. It'll be there all month. And then, uh, but on February 10th, Friday, February 10th, 7 to 9 p.m. is the artist reception. And I just want to bring people in. I want a lot of people to see not only my art, but the art that Stella's has to uh, show to people. And that show that's happening there, it's called What's Got Love Got to Do With It. It's going to be the theme because it's around Valentine's Day. Oh, yeah. and, and you like my stuff? That's great. I have a website and all that kind of thing. I've said it before. It may not sound disingenuous, but I would. it's nice to sell these things, but I just want to touch people. Right. I... Yeah, things like, are available. Like, you can buy prints, you can buy t-shirts, all that kind of stuff. Oh. But um, I, I, I just want to touch people, you know. Does that sound a little... No, no. You know, I it sounds fake. Well, no, it's no. really true. It's the only reason I'm doing well, this. Well, I mean, I mean, just for real quick, when, when, you know, we write, me and Pat, we do music too and stuff like that. You know, when you, when you finish a song, like it's nice that me and Pat like the song and we can tell each other how great the song is, but there's something else when somebody else... Here's it, and they're like, oh, yeah, right. right. And, and it just, yes. whether it's, you know, it's, it's, maybe it is feeding an ego. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know, but whatever it is, it feels good. It and feels that, good. Yeah, yeah, that's all that really matters, yeah. I guess, really. Like, when I'm, I'm knocked out that you guys like this stuff that feels, yeah, feels really great. good. You oh, know? It's fantastic. I feel a little bit valid. Yeah, I definitely, you know. definitely, uh, you don't even really have to be like into art. Like, we're, me, I wouldn't say Pat and I are like into the art world very much or going to the museums or anything like that. And we walked into this room and we were literally just blown away by what we saw here. It is, it is a sight to be seen. It's nothing, we, it was way more than we even imagined it would be. And I, I got to tell you, it's been a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure. pleasure. It is. Thanks it a lot is. for you're, coming out. Yeah, hey man, you're, you're, you're a, not just a great artist, but you're a great guy. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, we, 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 we had a hell I of a time. I appreciate that. We really enjoyed you, man. Awesome. Thanks for letting us into your house. And, uh, yeah, check it out, guys. You got the whole month to go look at this. You got a whole month, so you have no excuses if you don't go. All right, I think that's it. All right. That's it for us. This was a special edition of Level Up Cleveland, and we're out of here. We'll see you guys on Saturday. That'll be fine. <laughs>